as you close your physical eyes, begin to surrender your body fully to gravity. Soften your breathing. Release all the tension from your forehead and from between your brows. Loosen your jaw and your tongue. Relax your shoulders away from your ears. Your chest and core are soft, hips are grounded. Your arms and legs are heavy and completely at ease. Take a moment to clear your mind, arriving at darkness. Now, as you open your mind's eye, you find yourself outside, staring up. It is midday, and in the sky there are a smattering of ivory moons visible, close to the horizon. For once, their lunar cycles are all in sync. This is an incredibly rare occurrence, and you count five full moons. But you know there are more beyond your viewing range. High up in the sky, there are three sister suns close together. Two are yellow, and one of them is a deep red. It complements against the blue sky so intensely that it appears to reverberate. You're standing in an ocean, close to the shore, and still in shallow water. Due to all the full moons, the tides are extra strong today, but you are stronger. You don't budge at all as they hit your thighs in an even and endless lapping rhythm. You are called to this planet urgently. And although you cannot feel the heat due to the protective suit that covers you entirely, you know that it is smoldering outside. The intense heat stems from the red sun. It is a dying star, and it has been for a very long time. However, over the course of the past several days, its solar flare activity has picked up significantly and only intensifies with each passing day. Its current condition is critical. Ecosystems are experiencing sudden collapse. Rivers and lakes are losing their fresh water supplies, and the oceans are heating up at an alarming rate. The ice caps, which help bounce a lot of the heat from the suns away, are also melting like never before, and allowing even more heat to collect in the atmosphere. The inhabitants of this world had never experienced such widespread death and chaos descend upon them so quickly. You look over your shoulder, back towards the shoreline. The beach leads up to a dense tropical forest. Lining the edge of the forest, standing just in the shade, you see a large group of this Earth's children standing motionless, staring back at you. Their auras glow on the outside, and though they have barely any recollection of their past lives, their glow reveals how old their souls truly are. They are all beautiful, pure, and genderless. Though clothing is usually optional for these beings, they are all now voluntarily adorned in white cotton robes. It is a small reprieve from the heat as their body's temperature is much cooler than that of the environments. These beings are normally joyful and at peace. They live in symbiosis with their planet, maintaining a well-balanced equilibrium between giving and receiving. Due to the current circumstances, though, for the first time in their lives, they are experiencing fear and grief on a wide-scale collective level. This shift in their energy is dark and palpable to you. It breaks your heart. Though they all know who you are, it was not them who called you here, but this planet. This earth is old and sentient. All conscious beings living on this celestial body were birthed from deep within it. You swivel your head back towards the ocean, and your hand finds its way to your chest, but oh, the prism that hangs there lies underneath your protective suit. You are tied to this prism intimately. It amplifies your folding ability and can open portals even without your presence. You have sent it out and called it back many times to aid others. Your prism is a powerful tool, but like all things, it also has its limits. In the past, before your homeworld was destroyed, teams of Orime easily moved planets together, combining their strength and ability. They didn't see their planet's destruction coming, though, and only those who were off of it while it happened survive. You are few now and scattered across the universe. You feel someone gently pat the side of your torso before you hear them over the ocean. You lift your arm and look under it. 
One of the younger children had escaped the group. The waves pelt at them. As they hold on to your statuesque self and support with one hand, they offer you a yellow lotus flower in the other. It is filled with healing nectar. The heat from the three direct suns is so intense, though, that the edges of the lotus flower are shriveling up. The young one is also burning. You spot a clearing in the forest line, and quickly you grab them and fold to it. You're at the edge of the tropical forest with all the others now. You kneel down to meet the young one at their level. Their exposed skin is severely burned. Immediately, you take the lotus flower from their blistering hand. With your free hand, you gently cup the base of their skull, coaxing their head back. In a swift motion, you bring the lotus flower up to their lips and feed the nectar to them. It takes several moments, but the burns and blisters begin to fade. You look up from the young one. Everyone is staring at you with a strange mixture of hope and sadness in their eyes. This planet is so precious, and you're not sure if it's going to work, but you do have a plan. These beings are here to be of service to you in any capacity they can, and you are compelled to mirror that energy, even if it might destroy you in the process. Standing up, you open your right palm. A moment later, the prism is in it, and you quickly toss it straight up. It goes high up above the tropical canopy, but it doesn't come down. It hovers in place, and catching the direct sunlight opens a large portal. It's mesmerizing. The colors inside flow like an oily rainbow. Slowly, it descends, swallowing all the children of the earth with you. You all reappear on the other side of the planet. It is nighttime. You are in the northern hemisphere now, and there is a light dusting of frost on the ground. There is a collective sigh of relief from the heat, but you know that this break is only temporary. If this planet stays in the solar system, it will only be a matter of days before cooler weather disappears completely. You had folded them to a wide open field. The sky is clear and the stars are shining bright. You count seven full moons. Your plan will have its best hope of success with their energy synchronized at their peak. Another lunar event like this will not happen for many years, and everything will be dead by then. Squatting down, you command your suit to expose your hands. Hundreds of nanobots start to unlatch from each other and crawl up over your wrists. Your suit is composed of thousands of them. With your hands bare, you plant them straight down into the frozen soil. Your strength is such that the ground parts for you like butter. Though you cannot communicate with the children of this earth, you can download instructions into their sentient planet. The clearest and most efficient communication happens through direct touch. You feel the earth's energy and excitement as it absorbs your directions. A few moments later, there's a rumbling underground. It becomes violent like an earthquake. Everyone reacts by bending their knees and stretching out their arms, surfing in place for balance. Suddenly, it stops. A beat passes in stillness, and then roots explode from the ground. You had transported hundreds of beings with you, and each root finds its way around one of their ankles. The earth is communicating your instructions to them. It is teaching them the steps for the dance. After a minute, the roots release their grip and slither back underground. The children know what to do now. They all strip out of their white robes and begin to encircle you, evenly spacing themselves out. You all must be in the nude for this, and you command your suit to release you as well. Immediately, the bots unlatch from each other and fall to the ground. They quickly congregate together again and build a platform for you to orchestrate from. This dance is old as dirt. It is simply called the dance of energy. The energy you will build together starts with the breath. In sync, all the children gracefully drop to a seated position facing you. With a straight spine and their legs in lotus, they place their hands on their knees in an open palm mudra. This breath is powered from the navel point. Breathing through the nose, the diaphragm is used to pump the navel in, creating short explosive exhalations. The inhalations are gentle and come automatically. Altogether, you exhale everything you're holding onto. 
Taking a partial breath in, you begin the breath work, pumping your navel in on the exhalations. The fiery breath is slow to start, but as the children become accustomed to it, the speed and intensity picks up. As the breathwork continues, the auras of the children become brighter and fortified, and the prison beside you on the platform starts storing the surplus of energy from the inner fire these beings build. The fiery breath slowly comes to a stop, and the brightly glowing beings stand once again and begin dancing. Guided by your instructions through their mother, they take to the dance expertly as though they had been practicing for years. As the energy continues to build from the dance and collects in the prism, you stay still and seated. You have another task, one which these non-sexual beings cannot help you with. Slowly, you bring a hand between your legs. At first, you simply cup your exposed genitals in greeting, and then you begin to masturbate. The energy at the base of your pelvic floor builds, and the dance around you escalates as well. The prism laying beside you begins to rise on its own and comes to a stop about a foot over your head, hovering in place. Suddenly, you climax. The orgasmic energy shoots up your spine, lighting up all your energetic chakras on the way. Normally, the energy from this orgasm would simply escape through the crown of your head, but the prism is there and captures it. It glows and pulsates in place. The dance is over and everyone present becomes silent. Time pauses like a breath held in. And then, suddenly, the prism rockets up like a rising star. It shoots all the way up into space, beyond even the farthest reaching moon. You cannot, after all, simply move this planet. It needs all its moons, too, for the tides to continue as they do. The children come in close to you and take a seat, all connected, palm to palm. They lower their gaze and begin to meditate. Way above you in space, a vast portal begins to open, drawing on the energy that the dance generated, as well as the power of the seven full moons, it continues growing. You are connected to the prism as though it were still resting on your chest. You send it all your attention and energy. A sweat breaks on your forehead. You are finessing the complicated math to imprint the correct coordinates onto the prism. Thankfully, you had already known of a suitable trinary star system across the galaxy. The portal way over you begins to slow down in its expansion. You push on, sending it every ounce of energy you have. Your entire body shakes with effort. Then, the portal stops expanding altogether and begins to wobble unevenly. It isn't big enough yet, and what you had feared begins to manifest. Starting at the base of your spine, you feel a black hole inside you opening up. Your plan is failing. This black hole will eat you alive. You are beyond your edge, holding on to your connection to the portal by threads. Your brow is deeply furrowed and tears of anguish stream down your face. As your energy leaves you, the black hole inside you grows. A hand comes to rest on your shoulder and your bleary eyes snap open. Turning your head, you meet a set of lilac eyes, large and full of concern. Your spirits lift instantly. Another Oru has arrived. Her beautiful face is framed by wild seafoam locks that cascade down in waves to her waist. She extends her free arm, palm open. Her own prism rests in it, and you can feel its immense power ripple out. You don't know how she managed to imbue so much energy into it, but you don't have time to ask. Her prism lifts from her open palm and shoots off into space to meet with your own. Moments later, you feel the prisms connect and the portal immediately stabilizes. It begins to expand faster and more fortified than ever. The Oru had removed her helmet, but she still wears a masterful suit made by one of the last creators currently in physical form. From a hidden pocket, she pulls out an energizing bean and feeds it to you directly. She throws you a wink and a smile before moving her hand off your shoulder and intertwining it with your own. The little Oru settles into a seated position beside you and shifts her full focused energy back to the portal. The bean she had fed you restores you, 
and the black hole inside shrinks until it disappears. A big sigh escapes your mouth as the internal anguish you'd been in vanishes. Your prism holds the coordinates for the portal, and after reviewing the math, her own approves and copies the chosen location for the fold. You are not at full strength, but you are healed enough to throw your energy back into the portal. In unison around you, the children of the earth begin to hum in harmony. Their resonating sound waves wash over you both, raising your vibrations. The portal is now large enough, and slowly it makes its way back towards you, first engulfing the moons and then this entire planet. The portal folded you all successfully. You open your eyes and are met by three different sister suns making their way over the horizon. It is sunrise. Before you can say a word, the glowing children swarm you both, and you find yourself at the center of a giant group hug. Tears of joy and relief stream down your face. You, and all the support you received, did it together. You all saved the sentient mother planet and all the life she nurtures on her surface and in her vast bodies of water. As the children cheer and continue to embrace you, you bask in their relief and elated energy. Your hand is still intertwined with the Oru's, and you catch each other's eyes and break into peals of laughter. It feels incredible to be connected to another Oru again. Finally, the group around you settles, and you all turn your faces towards the suns and close your eyes, basking in their warmth together. You're all smiling and a deep sense of satisfaction and peace fills you completely. Slowly, begin to tune into your physical body, drawing a little more awareness to your breathing. Begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Start rolling out your wrists and your ankles. On your next inhalation, extend your arms up overhead and take a full body stretch like you're just waking up. Alternate between flexing your heels and pointing your toes. On your next exhalation, curl into a ball. Give yourself a little hug and maybe rock side to side if that feels right. Slowly, drop to whichever side is calling to you. Using your arm as a cushion, Bring your knees in as close as feels good, tucking your chin in towards your chest and flexing your backside open. Take several deep and even breaths right where you are. And from here, it's your choice. Feel free to stay down and rest or gently come up to a seated position. Thank you so much for your time and participation. Peace and love.